Have you seen every picture of yourself? In the age of social media, more of us are online than ever before. We post pictures of ourselves and pictures of each other all the time. But what about the pictures you didn't post? The ones that aren't on your social media profiles, the ones that you don't remember taking. Have you seen them? Clearview AI has, and they're using these photos to help their clients learn everything about you. In my video on surveillance, one of the things that Cade Crawford and I talked about is the increasing ease with which it's possible to track people as they move from one place to another. Some of these systems are opt-in, like apps like Find My Friend and the location feature on Snapchat, but others are built into our world. Unavoidable and often unnoticed. It's normal. One of the applications of these surveillance systems is another AI system we've discussed, facial recognition. With a network of cameras and enough training data to create a good algorithm, you could identify anyone on the street, whether they happen to be walking out of a Starbucks on their way to work or running from the scene of a crime. This system is what Clearview AI has been selling to more than 600 law enforcement agencies and a few private companies for the last year. In selling this product to law enforcement, from local police precincts to the FBI and Department of Homeland Security, Clearview AI claims to aim to exonerate the innocent, identify victims of child sexual abuse and other crimes, and avoid eyewitness lineups that are prone to human error. The company has collected billions of photos of you, me, and anyone else with a public social media profile by scraping those photos from the internet. With this dataset, Clearview AI's developers were then able to train a machine learning algorithm to identify any person with 100% accuracy and no demographic biases or so they claimed in a study that was conducted by an independent panel of experts. This statistic is not what it seems. The system was tested on the faces of people it had already seen in the training data, clear and professional headshots of local, state, and federal representatives. It's not so surprising in that case that the model would perform this well. Eyewitness lineups would likely be less prone to human error if the person attacking you stood up straight, took off anything obscuring their face, adjusted the lighting so that you could see clearly, and let you get a good head-on look at them first. However, the proposed use case for this system involves much messier data. Stills from security footage where a person's face might be obscured, rotated, or otherwise difficult to identify. They also don't test the system against faces that it hasn't seen. If someone isn't on social media and doesn't really have any public photos, how would the system identify them? And more importantly, who might it identify instead? Additionally, at the end of the day, US lawmakers are predominantly white and male. There's also the fact that none of the experts on this panel seem to have any expertise in facial recognition systems. In short, the claim that the system is 100% accurate and has no demographic biases is questionable and sloppy at best. In fact, the company acknowledged this in an article in the New York Times saying that the system finds matches 75% of the time. They did not discuss what happens if and when false matches occur. In spite of all this, law enforcement agencies using this software claim that it has already solved hundreds of cold cases. As you might expect, experts in facial recognition and civil liberties have expressed concern about potential misuses of this system. What you might not expect is that police officers have too. And users aren't the only people pushing back against Clearview. It turns out that scraping people's photos without receiving their informed consent has been illegal in the state of Illinois since 2008. The company is currently facing two class action lawsuits. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube have also sent the company cease and desist letters after learning about the photo scraping from their websites. At the end of the day, the ball is already rolling when it comes to the use of this system, so even if the lawsuits in Illinois end up being successful, it would only limit the use of the system in the state of Illinois. It also likely wouldn't prevent future expansion on the use of this technology. There's also no real way to remove yourself from their database if you're already in it unless you live in California, the EU, or the UK, which have different data privacy laws. Their website does recommend setting your social media accounts to private if you are not already in their system and would like to not be added to it in the future, but there's no way of knowing whether or not you're in their system, so that advice isn't super helpful. However, even though you might not be able to personally limit how Clearview AI system is used, you can advocate for laws similar to the one in Illinois that protect your biometric data and require companies to request permission in order to use it. You could also advocate for laws that prohibit the use of facial recognition in policing, similar to the ones that we've already seen in Cambridge, Somerville, and San Francisco. 
Personally, my biggest concern when it comes to Clearview AI is really the fact that it just hasn't been externally validated in any way. They make a lot of claims that could be true, it could perform really well, but we just don't know that for sure. They also originally said that they were only going to sell to law enforcement, but there were reports that they're now selling to private companies, and that leads down a dark path of selling this to the public, which is not a great idea. The company is currently against selling this product to the public, but we'll see what happens. What do you think? Do you think that Clearview AI system could find you? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon, where you get behind the scenes looks at my PhD life and what goes into video production. Otherwise, you can now find me on every platform under my human name if you'd like to follow my day-to-day -day PhD antics, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.